Okay, for questions one and two, it says, classify the conic section as such as graph, be sure to label all important points and features, such as center of vertices, co-vertices, asymptotes, axis symmetry, transverse axis, or conjugate axis, depending on what conic section you're graphing. Okay, so this first one, this is a parabola. How do we know it's a parabola? Because there's only one square term, which is y squared, and since it's y squared, it's gonna open either right or left, a is negative, so this is a parabola opening left. And you can get that just from the equation. Okay, so with the parabola, we need to identify the vertex, the focus, the directrix, and the axis of symmetry. Those are the four things that you need. Okay, so this guy is in vertex form, so the, the vertex would be at h, which is 1, k, which is 6. Okay, so at the point 1, 6, Here's our vertex. Okay. A is negative 3. So the absolute value of negative 3 is 1 over 4 P. P is going to give us the distance from the vertex to the focus and vertex to directrix. So if we solve this, absolute value 3 is 3. So we're going to get 12 P equals 1, or P equals 1 12th. Okay, so again, this is a, a parabola opening to the left, which means 1 12th to the left of our vertex is that guy, and 1 12th to the right is going to be our directrix. Okay, so this is, this is the, the line, directrix is a line x equals 1 and 1 twelfth, or 13 twelfths. Okay, and the focus would be this point right here. Focus is going to be the point 1 twelfth to the left of 1, which would be 11 twelfths, and then the y coordinate would be 6. Okay, um, so our parabola is going to look like that. The only thing we need is the axis of symmetry, which is going to be a line going right through here. So the axis of symmetry, I'll just label it over here. Axis of symmetry is going to be a line y equals 6. Okay, so from the equation, parabola opening to the left. Okay, we get the vertex from, from h and k here. Uh, we can figure out p by using this equation. Absolute value of a is equal to 1 over 4p, p being the distance from the vertex to the focus and vertex to the directrix. We graph it, we're done. Good job, kids. All right, number two, this guy is a hyperbola. You know it's a hyperbola because we have two squares that are being subtracted. So this one, since the x squared is the positive term, this is a hyperbola that's opening left and right. Left and right. Okay, so again, we get the center by HK. So the center is at the point 2, negative 2, because H is 2 and K is negative 2. So at the point 2, negative 2, here's our center. Okay, this 9 is a squared, so a squared is equal to 9, meaning a is equal to 3. b squared is the denominator on this guy, which is just 1, so 1 and then square root of 1 is also 1. c squared is a squared plus b squared, so that would be 10, and then c would be equal to the square root of 10, which is 3 something. Okay, but we can just leave it a square root of 10 and just kind of estimate where it is. All right, so since it's opening right and left, the distance from the center here to the vertices is 3. So that means 3 to the right would be one vertex, and 3 to the left is the other vertex. So vertices have the points 5, negative 2, and negative 1, negative 2. Going up from the center... C units, we get to here, and down, excuse me, B units, we get there. That's going to be the end of the conjugate axis. Okay, so there's our box. 
from the box, we can draw our asymptotes. Okay. Finger move. Okay. All right. So we got our asymptotes there. Um, focus is going to be radical 10, which is a little more than 3. So it's going to be right here and right here. So the foci are going to be, and remember, we're starting at the center and we're moving in an x direction. So that's going to be 2 plus radical 10, negative 2, and 2 minus radical 10 negative two, okay? Our hyperbola is gonna have this shape to it. Now we just have to get the asymptote. So to get the asymptotes, we're gonna use the point slope formula. The point we're using is the center. Okay, that's the easiest one to do it. So we're gonna go y minus the y coordinate of the center, which is negative two, so it makes it y plus two, is equal to the slope. Remember, we started here at this point, we went up two and over three, so we're gonna get equations of asymptotes plus and minus one third x minus the x coordinate of the center, which is two. So there's the equations of asymptotes. Y plus two is equal to plus or minus one third x minus two, done, all set. Minor, <clears throat> minor corrections, this is 13 twelfths, and this is 11 twelfths. I didn't write that, and I said we go up two, we go up one. I wrote it as one third, but I said two thirds, so the slope is one third on this guy. Okay, problem three. This one, looking at the equation, we have x plus one squared plus y minus one squared equals 12. So this is going to be a circle, and you know that because it's a square plus a square equals not one okay so r squared so our center for this guy is at negative one one and the radius is going to be the square root of 12 square root of 12 being three something three and a half okay so we start here at negative one one and we do our points. One, two, three, and a little bit. And one, two, three, and a little bit. Up. One, two, three, and a little bit. One, two, three, and a little bit. And draw our circle. Not too bad. And then our radius is going to be rad 12. Okay, if we had to label these points, we could easily do it. Okay, this one, since their center is at negative one, one, and the radius is radical 12, we'd be moving from the center to this point here. So that would be one plus radical 12, one, sorry, negative one plus radical 12, one. Okay, and this guy, same idea would be negative one minus radical 12, one. This point up here, since now we're in the y direction, would be negative one, one plus radical 12, and this guy would be negative one comma one minus radical 12, okay? So circles are easy, we got that. Um, this guy, number four, this one is an ellipse. Now remember, an ellipse, the major axis goes by the larger denominator. So since this is a larger denominator, a squared is equal to 25, meaning A is equal to 5. B squared is equal to 4, so B would be equal to 2. C squared is, in the ellipse, is A squared minus B squared, so 25 minus 4 is 21, and C is equal to the square root of 21. Okay, so again, we're going to start where? We're going to start the center. So the center for this guy is 2 negative 1. Again, it's still h and k. So 2, negative 1. There's the center of our ellipse. Okay, so a is the distance from the center to the vertices. Now, the vertices are on the major axis. The major axis is, is vertical. So we'd be starting here and going up a, which is 5 units. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
right to here and down from the center. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, B is the distance from the center to the co-vertex, so B is two. So starting at the center, moving to the right two and moving to the left two, we're gonna get our ellipse looking like this. Beautiful, and then we just have to have to label it. So vertices are gonna be what? They're gonna be two, four for this guy and two, negative six for this guy. Co-vertices, I'll just write a CV, are gonna be, are gonna be what? They're gonna be four, negative one, and it's going to be zero, negative one. So we just have to find the focus, right? So foci are radical 21, which is between four and five somewhere, and that's gonna be along the major axis. So if we go from here, one, two, three, four, and a little bit, we just call it there. And one, two, three, four, a little, we just call it right there. Then we just have to label the foci. So the foci, remember we are moving in the Y direction from the center. So that would be two, there's our X coordinate, negative one plus radical 21, and two, negative one minus radical 21. And we got our ellipse drawn and labeled. Good job. Okay, next one, we have two circles. It says identify the center and radius of each circle for number five and number six. So the first one, we have to get the center. The center is gonna be at the point H, K, which is, since it's y, X minus H, that would be negative four, Y minus K, negative four. So negative four, negative four, we're here. There's our center. The radius is gonna be the square root of this because this is x minus eight squared plus five minus k squared equals r squared. So the radius would be the square root of six, which is a little bigger than two, right? Two something. Okay, so we'll go one, two in this direction and get it, and one, two in this direction, and one, two in this direction, one, two in this direction, and we have our circle which is almost round all right so to get these points what are we doing we're starting at our center which is negative four negative four so we're going here negative four this one up top we're, we're changing the y direction so it's going to be negative four plus rad six this one on the bottom would be negative four negative four minus rad six this guy would be negative four plus rad six negative four, and since we're moving in X direction, this one, negative four minus rad six, negative four. Okay, there's that one. This guy, same idea, the center is at negative two, three, and the radius is gonna be the square root of four, which is two. So negative two, three is here, Two to the right, we get that. Two to the above, we get that. Two to the left, we get that. Two to the bottom, we get that. Labeling this points, this guy is zero, three. This guy is negative four, three, because we're moving two from the center in the X direction, left and right. Uh, this one is gonna be negative two, five. And this one is gonna be negative two, negative one. Again, moving two units from the center. Okay, so got that, good. For these two, it says, use information provided to write standard form equation of each circle. So we know that a circle is this equation, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. The center, is hk. So if we're gonna go x minus h or x minus negative 12, that's gonna make this x plus 12 squared, don't forget that, plus y minus negative three, so y plus three squared equals the square root of two, or two, yeah, two rad three squared, which is 
we can do that. I'm just going to write these guys out real quick. This is going to be 4 times 3. So 2 squared is 4 and radical 3 squared is 3. So 2 times or 4 times 3 is 12. We just got the equation of our circle relatively easy. Same idea on this one. Same equation, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So x minus negative 13 makes this x plus 13 squared plus y minus negative 10. So y plus 10 squared equals r squared, 4 squared, which is 16. So even easier on that guy. And we're done. Okay, so for these guys, it says identify the center vertices, co vertices, and foci of each. These are both ellipses, and we get that from the equations, two squares being added. So again, start at the center. The center for this first one, number nine, is going to be negative four, negative two. So negative four, negative two, we're right here. Here's the center. Okay. The bigger denominator is 25. So the bigger denominator for an ellipse means that it's a squared. So a squared is 25. A is equal to five, which means b squared is equal to four. And b equals to the square root of four, which is two. In an ellipse, a squared minus b squared equals c squared. So c squared is equal to 21, and c is equal to the square root of 21, which is roughly four in a bit. Okay, so we got enough information, we can do this. Since the bigger denominator is under y, this is going to be a vertical major axis, which means the distance from the center here to the vertex is going to be a. So we're gonna go up from the center, one, two, three, four, five, right here, that's one vertex, and that's at the point negative four, three, Negative four, three. And then again, starting from the center and going down A, or down five units. One, two, three, four, five. That is gonna be the other vertex, which is negative four, negative seven. Okay. The distance from the center, center, to the co-vertex is B, B being two, so to the right, two. And we get this point, negative two negative two, and two to the left is negative six, negative two. So we have our ellipse, sketch that part of it. Now the only thing we need to do is get the foci. The foci, remember the distance, the foci are the distance C from the center across on the major axis. So that's gonna be the vertical axis. So C is four in a bit, right, four plus. So starting at the center and moving up four, one, two, three, four, in a little bit and from the center down one two three four in a little bit we get that so our foci i'm just going to write them on the bottom here okay it's going to be negative four because they're on the on the major axis so the x value is going to be four and it's negative two plus radical 21 for the y value negative two is the y coordinate of the center and we're going up that and the other one is negative four, negative two minus radical 21. So we got that. This guy, again, ellipse with the center at the point one, negative five, okay? A squared is 16, so A is equal to four. B squared, equals one, because there's no denominator shown, so it's just one. It's square root of one, b is one. And c squared is a squared minus b squared is 16 minus one is 15. And so c is equal to the square root of 15. So starting at one, negative five, we have our center right here. This guy, the bigger denominator, a squared is under the x value. So this is gonna be, the major axis would be in the x direction. So starting from the center and moving A units, four units, we're gonna get this point, which is five, negative five for one vertex. 
And going forward to the left of the center, one, two, three, four, we're gonna get this other vertex, which will be negative three, negative five. Okay, to get the co-vertices, we go from the center up one unit, up B. So that's gonna be one, negative four, and from the center down one, that's going to be one, negative six. And with this, we can draw our ellipse. The foci are going to be on the major axis. Okay, again, the foci are C, distance C from the center. So radical 15, a little bit more than, or a little bit less than four. Okay, so we're going to go from the center. One, two, three, almost four there. And one, two, three, almost four there. Okay, so this, we're moving in the X direction. So we're gonna start the X coordinate of the center, which is one plus radical 15, negative five. And this guy is gonna be one minus radical 15, negative five. Okay, for these guys, <clears throat> it says use the information provided to write the standard form equation of each ellipse. Okay, so first what you need to do is figure out where the vertices and foci are, because we're given both vertices and foci. So just you can just real quick, it doesn't have to be like perfect, but just kind of sketch it. Negative five, five is gonna be about there, and negative 15, five is about there. So if that's the case, then we know this is the major axis. And we're looking for the distance from negative 15 to negative 5. So this distance is going to be 10 units. Agreed? Okay, so half of 10 would be 5. And that's where our center is going to be. So 5 to the right of 15, negative 15, is negative 10. And that's going to be negative 10, 5. Okay, and five to the left of negative five is also negative 10, five. So we have our center at negative 10, five. Beautiful. The foci are at negative seven, five. Okay, so negative seven, five, which is three to the right of the center, which means C is equal to three. And negative 13, which is three to the left of negative 10. So C would be equal to three. If we know A is five, and c is 3, then we know a squared is equal to 25, and c squared is equal to 9. For an ellipse, a squared minus b squared equals c squared, which is also like saying a squared minus c squared equals b squared. So 25 minus 9 is 16. We know where the center is. We know that this is a, an ellipse going this way, so the horizontal axis, uh, the x-axis is a major axis. So this one is gonna be of the form x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared equals one. So just pop all this stuff in, right? x minus the x-coordinate of the vertex, or the center, negative 10. So x minus negative 10 is x plus 10 squared plus y minus k, five, squared. This is gonna be over a squared, so this is 25. This is gonna be b squared, so this is 16 equals one. We have our equation, relatively easy. Okay, so for this one, we have vertices at one, negative three, and one, negative 13. Oh, how convenient is that? They're also 10 units apart. Half of 10 is five, which means A equals five, because that's gonna be the distance to, from the center to the foci, to the, excuse me, to the vertices, okay? So if A is five, that means A squared equals 25. We also know this is a vertical major axis. Why? Because the vertices are on are above and below each other, so they would be vertical axis, right? S um, the center 
would be halfway between negative 3 and negative 13, which is going to be the center. That's going to be at the point 1, negative 8. Because that's 3 or 5 down from negative 3 and 5 up from negative 13. So that's how we get the center. C is the distance to the focus. So if the center is at negative 8 and we're going to negative 5, that would be 3. The other direction from negative 8 to negative 11 is also 3. So C is equal to 3 and C squared equals 9. Just like the last one, A squared minus C squared equals B squared. So b squared is equal to 16. We know the center. We know that this is of the form x minus h squared over b squared plus y minus k squared over a squared equals 1. And we know that's the case because this is a, this is a vertical major axis. So the bigger denominator is going to be under y. So just pop in what we know. Okay, x minus h. So x minus 1 squared over b squared, which is 16, plus y minus k, which is negative 8, so y plus 8 squared over a squared, 25, equals 1. And there you have it. Okay, so this one, it says identify the center vertices, foci, and asymptotes of each, then sketch the graph. So this it's a hyperbola. Both these are hyperbolas. We know those because they're squares being subtracted. Okay, so we'll start first with the center. We always want to start at the center. Okay, so center is going to be h, which is 1, k, which is also 1. Okay, so our center is at 1, 1, which is right here. Okay. This is a hyperbola opening up and down because y squared is the positive fraction, which means a squared is equal to 16, so a is equal to 4, and b squared is equal to 9, so b is equal to 3, c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, so 25, c is equal to 5. So let's get what we get starting from the center. Now, A is going to be vertical. It's going to be above and below the center because this is a hyperbola opening up and down. So we're going to go from the center up A unit. So one, two, three, four. We get to that point. And one, two, three, four down from the center. And we get our vertices. So our vertices are at one, five, and 1, negative 3. Okay, good. The covertices, which we're going to use to, to uh, draw the box for the asymptotes, we're going to start at the center and we're going to move B. So we're going to move 3, 1, 2, 3 to the right and 1, 2, 3 to the left of the center to draw the box, which we're going to use to draw our asymptotes. So, corner of the box through the center, corner of the box through the center, there's our asymptotes. <coughs> this is hyperbola opening up and down. So the shape of it is going to be like this. It goes through the vertex and it goes close but never crossing the asymptotes. So we get that and we get this. Okay, so center we got, vertices we got. We need the focus, right? So the focus is going to be C units from the center, okay, on the vertical axis. Okay, so from the center, one, two, three, four, five, we're up here. So one foci is at one, six, and the other foci is down five units from the center. So one, two, three, four, five, and that's going to be the point one, negative four. So we have our foci. We just have to get the equations of asymptotes using point slope formula, which is y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1, and we can leave it in that form. 
the y value that we're using is the y coordinate of the center because that's the only point we really know okay so y <clears throat> minus one is equal to the slope we start at the center we went one two three four up and one two three to the right so our slope is going to be plus and minus four thirds so the positive the positive asymptote will be the one that's in getting bigger, going up from left to right. The negative one is the one that's getting going down from left to right. So, and this is x minus the x coordinate of the vertex, which is also one. So y minus one, plus or minus four thirds, x minus one, and this is the equations of asymptotes. If you leave it in point slope form, it just makes life so much easier. Okay, so for this one, again, hyperbola, but in this case, this is opening right and left because x is our first fraction, positive fraction, so a squared is going to be the denominator over under the positive fraction, so a squared is going to be equal to 9, which means a is 3, b squared is equal to 25, meaning b is equal to 5, b is equal to 5, that is a very ugly 5, 5, that I wrote. Okay, and c squared, it's going to be a squared plus b squared, so 9 plus 25, which is 34. c is equal to radical 34, which is almost 6. All right, so starting at the center, looking at this, right, it's x minus h, so x minus negative 1, our center, is going to be at negative 1. There's nothing being subtracted from y. So zero, so our center is at negative one, zero, right there. Okay, again, this is a, a hyperbola opening right and left, so the distance from the center to the vertices is going to be a, so that's one, two, three to the right is a, and one, two, three to the left is also a, so vertices are going to be two, zero and negative four zero the foci are going to be on that same axis but we're going to go radical 34 which is again almost almost six from the center so starting at the center one two three four five almost six we're right there and again from the center one two three four five almost six we're going to get our foci. So again, we're moving in the x direction from the center. So that's going to be negative 1 plus radical 34, 0. And negative 1 minus radical 34, 0. So those, those are our foci. Okay, from the center to the co-vertices, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, is b. So that's 5. We're going to use these to draw the lines that we're going to use to draw our asymptotes, draw the box, I should say. Okay. And then we have asymptotes going there. Okay. So, what way is our parabola going? We know it's going right and left through the vertices so it's going to look like this okay and all we need to do is label the asymptotes again use point slope formula that's the easiest way to do it so we're going to go y minus the y value of the the y value of the center which is zero and we're using the center because that's what the line is going through so y minus zero or just y is equal to the slope we started we started at the center one two three four we went five up and four to the right so that's going to be plus or minus five fourths that covers both of these x minus the x coordinate of the center so x minus negative one which is x plus one and we just got our equations of asymptotes right there so vertices, foci, equates of asymptote, center, we're done.
Okay, so for these guys, it says use information provided to write the standard form equation of each hyperbola. We're given the vertices and foci, which tells us plenty. That's all we need to know. So first thing is the vertices are at negative 7, 11, and negative 7, 3. It keeps moving them. We just want to figure out where this. So negative 7, 11 is up here. Negative 7, 3 is about here, which means this is a transverse axis and our hyperbola is gonna go that way. It gives us a lot of information, right? First, we know this is gonna be of the form y minus k squared over a squared minus x minus h squared over b squared equals one. So that's good. We know at least what the general equation looks like. Beautiful. What else we know? We know that the center is halfway between the vertices, right? So if the vertices are at 11 up here, and three down here, that means this total distance is eight and half of eight is four. So a would be equal to four, a squared being equal to 16. Okay, good, marvelous. So what's four down from 11? That would be the center would be at negative seven seven and four up from three would also be seven so we have our center at negative seven seven beautiful okay what else do we know we know the distance from the center to the foci is c so if our center is at negative seven seven and we're going to negative seven twelve c is equal to five c squared is then equal to 25. in a hyperbola a squared plus b squared equals c squared which means c squared minus a squared equals b squared so 25 minus 16 b squared is equal to 9 and we can just pop everything in we know the center so we know h and k we know what a squared is we know what b squared is we know the general equation of our ellipse so let's pop this stuff in okay y minus K. K is the y coordinate of the vertex. So this is going to be y minus 7 squared over a squared, 16, minus x minus h. h is the x coordinate of the center. So x minus negative 7 makes this x plus 7 squared over b squared, 9 equals 1. And we're done. Okay, so for this one, again, we're given the vertices and foci, so we're gonna figure out roughly where they are. So at so 10, with 11, this guy, what do we know? We know that we have, okay, sorry, a little confusion there. All right, so at 10, 11, so that's gonna be 10, 11, we just call it right there, and 10, three, so again, if, if the vertices are one on top of each other, that means this is going to be a <clears throat> hyperbola that's opening up and down. So that is of this form, y minus k squared over a squared minus x minus h squared over b squared equals one. All right, so what do we know? We know this distance from 11 to three is eight and half of eight is four. So a equals four. A to squared equals 16. What else do we know? We know that we know the center is four down from 11, so that's going to be the center is at 10. Four down from 11 is seven. Four up from three is also seven, so we can val validate that. Okay. C is the distance from the center, 10, seven, to the foci, so 10, 12. So from seven to 12, C is five. So c squared equals 25 in a hyperbola. c squared minus a squared equals b squared. So 25 minus 16 b squared equals 9. And we have enough info. We have the center. We have a squared. We have b squared. We know it's, it's of this general form, so pop this stuff in. Okay, y minus k, y minus k is the y coordinate of the center. So y minus seven squared over a squared, 16, minus x minus h squared, h is 10. So x minus 10 squared over b squared, nine 
equals 1. So we have our equation y minus 7 squared over 16 minus 6 minus 10 squared over 9 equals 1, and we are good. Okay, so identify the vertex, focus, axis of symmetry, and directories of each, then sketch the graphs. Now these guys are going to be parabolas, and we know they're parabolas because, number one, there's only one squared term. Okay, and axis of symmetry and directories we're going to talk about in parabolas. So we need to look at what we have here. Okay, this thing is in vertex form. Okay, x equals one-third times y plus one squared minus three. So the vertex is going to be the point H, right, which is negative 3, K, Y minus K, so Y minus negative 1. So there's our vertex at negative 1, excuse me, negative 3, negative 1. Marvelous, negative 3, negative 1, we're here. Okay, A is positive and this is a y squared so this thing is opening to the right it's opening like that and we get that just from the equation what else do we know well since it's opening this way the axis of symmetry is going to be a line going through the vertex which should cut the thing in half which is going to be a line y equals negative one we need to find out what P is the distance from the vertex to the focus and vertex to the directory. It's those are the other two things we have to label. So absolute value of one third is equal to one over four P. We know this is positive, so it's opening right. So one third equals one over four P. Multiply both sides by <coughs> four P. So we get four P equals three, or P equals three-fourths. All right, so what do we do with this? P is the distance from the vertex here to the focus, which is going to be to the right of the vertex. Okay, so we need to figure out what is negative three and four. So negative three would be like negative 12 fourths plus three fourths would give us negative nine fourths would be the x coordinate of the focus so our focus is going to be negative nine fourths negative one we got that guy okay the directrix is going to be three fourths to the left of the vertex so it's going to be right about here and again that's going to be the line x equals well what's three fourths to the left of negative 12 fourths or or negative three that would be negative 15 fourths so the directrix is the line x equals negative 15 fourths so we have our vertex directrix axis of symmetry and focus for our parabola we're doing good this guy, same idea, but this one, x is being squared and a is positive. This is the parabola opening up. Again, we start at the vertex. It's in vertex form. So that's going to be x minus h, x minus negative 3, so negative x plus 3, minus 1. So we're at negative 3, negative 1. There's our vertex. Okay. Um, this is going to go up. So we have our axis of symmetry is the line x equals negative 3. Um, a is 2, and it's positive. So absolute value 2 is equal to 1 over 4p, or 8p equals on multiple sides by, by 4p, and p equals 1 eighth, so, which means 1 eighth above because this guy's opening that way. One eighth above our vertex would be the focus. So negative one is like negative eight eighths. So 
our focus would be at negative three, negative seven eighths. And the directrix would be one eighth below that, which would be the line y equals negative eight over eight minus one eighth it would be the line equals y equals negative nine eighths. Okay, so vertex we have, axis of symmetry we have, directrix we have, focus we have, we're good. Okay, so 19 and 20 ask us to use the information provided to write the vertex form equation of each parabola. So we need to figure out what's what. First thing, we have the vertex at five, seven. So that's five, seven right there. Okay, and we have the focus at five, 83 twelfths. So now the X values are the same. So we know that, that the focus is gonna be either above or below this. We need to figure out what it is. So we need to write the vertex the y value in terms of 12. So multiply 7 by 12 over 12, and we're going to get 84 twelfths. So we just figured out where our vertex is in terms of 12. Now, is 84 twelfths bigger than, <clears throat> is it bigger than 83 twelfths? Yeah, so this thing would be going down, right? So our our focus is going to be below it, and then we're going to have a parabola that looks like that. Okay? So that's going to help, right? Now, what's what's the difference between 84 twelfths and 83 twelfths? So P is equal to 1 twelfth. Good, right? So absolute value A is equal to 1 over 4 times P, which is 1 twelfth. So this is one over four twelfths, which is one third. Flipping this and multiply, P equals three. But this is a parabola opening down. So since it's opening down, A needs to be negative. So A, sorry, this is A equals three. A is gonna be negative three. Junior, can I go get it? Yeah, yeah. All right, so we just have to pop this stuff in, right? So we're gonna go, remember this is probably up and down, so it's gonna be y equals a negative three. We have our vertex, five seven, so this is gonna be x minus five squared plus seven. So y is equal to negative three times x minus five squared plus seven. Cool. This guy, same idea, right? We're looking at this. We have negative eight, six, and negative eight, seven. Okay, so since that's the case, this guy is opening up. Okay, so we just have to find P. Well, the, diff the distance from six to seven is one, so P equals one. So if absolute value of A is equal to one over four times one, A, is equal to one fourth. And since it's opening up, that would be a positive one fourth. So X squared, right? Because it's opening up. So this is gonna be Y equals A one fourth X minus H, X minus negative eight. So X plus eight squared plus six. The y coordinate vertex. So y is equal to one fourth, positive one fourth, x plus eight squared plus six. And there you go. Okay, so last slide, our song list. If you were paying attention, there was music in the background all the time. Slide number one was Come Fly With Me, Frank Sinatra. Slide two, The Best Is Yet to Come, Frank Sinatra. Slide three and four, I Should Have Never Started Loving You, The Marshall Tucker Band. Slide five, Walk This Way, Run DMC with Aerosmith. Slide six, Naive Melody, This Must Be the Place, The Talking Heads. Slide seven, Chicken Fried by the Zac Brown Band. Slide eight, The Brightest Smile in Town by Greg Allman Band. Slide nine, Party at Ground Zero 
Fishbone, Slide 10. The Boys Are Back in Town by the Bus Boys. And Side 11 to Jackson's The Love You Save, Jackson 5. There you go. I hope this helps. Ready for the test on Monday. Good luck.